Welcome to the video lecture for the subject basic pattern learning. Today we will be seeing unit 5 about fasteners. There are various types of fasteners. Some are decorative and conspicuous, while some are meant to be inconspicuous. The common fasteners are button and button holes, button and loops, press buttons, hooks and eyes, eyelets, cords, and many more. Fasteners should be fixed onto double layered material for better strength. They should be fixed in such a way that the right side of the garment laps over the left side for women and the left side laps over the right for men. It should be selected to suit the color, design, texture, fabric, style, garment as well as the position of the placket. We should also consider the age and sex of the wearer too. The first heading is about button and buttonholes. These have functional as well as decorative uses. Contrasting colored or self-colored buttons in different shapes may be arranged in groups or at regular intervals to produce an attractive effect. Buttons are nothing but they are done through slits cut in garments to hold buttons in place. The raw edges of the slits are finished with buttonhole stitches, zigzag stitches or fabric binding made of some material which is same or contrasting material can be used. Button and buttonholes are generally used for men's shirts, trousers, etc. Whereas press buttons and hooks and eyes are commonly used on ladies' blouses and children's apparels. Positions of buttonholes and buttons. Buttonholes should be worked on the overlap before the buttons are fixed. They may be placed vertically or horizontally on the garment. Whereas, horizontal buttonholes hold the front securely even on tight fitting garments. Whereas, vertical buttonholes are worked on the lengthwise grain and are exactly on the center front line, parallel to the center front edge. They are used for shirts, pants, fly openings, etc. Length of the buttonhole. Whether the buttonhole is vertical or horizontal, buttons are placed exactly on the center front line. The length of the buttonhole should be at least half inch or half the diameter of the button use. The easiest way to determine the correct size of the buttonhole is to cut a slit in a scrap of fabric and adjust the length until the button slips through easily. Types of buttonholes. There are many different ways that you can create buttonholes on your clothes according to the design and trend. The two main categories are worked buttonholes, fabric or bound buttonholes. Let's see in detail about worked buttonholes. These are used on children's garments as well as worked after the garment is completed. Buttonhole stitches can be worked by hand or by machine. We need to avoid these on fabrics that stretch and fray easily. Hands when buttonholes are to be made with matching thread and it should be of uniform length worked close together by hand. They are worked around the slit cut in the size of a button with closely spaced blanket stitches and are ended at either ends. Whereas machine buttonholes are simply simple and easy to complete, where two parallel zigzag stitches are done on either side of the slit. They are simple enough to take with buttonhole footers or automatic buttonholes are available in many machines. Steps in constructing work buttonholes. For horizontal buttonholes, we need to mark the buttonhole slightly with a pencil or chalk. Then, machine stitch or back stitch a narrow rectangle of about 1 8 inch width around the buttonhole marking. Then, cut on the buttonhole line carefully following the straight thread. Fasten the thread on the wrong side with tiny back stitches and work buttonhole stitches starting near the square end. To make the buttonhole stitches, insert the needle in the slit and then bring it out from the point just outside the guideline stitching. Circle the working thread under the needle point and pull out the needle. Do buttonhole stitches on the other side towards the square end. 
Near the square end, make a bar tag by tacking two or three stitches to end the stitch on the opposite side. At the end of the last stitch, insert the needle just outside the knot and pull the thread out on the wrong side. Fasten the thread end on the wrong side by running the needle through the and complete the stitch. So as I have shown you in this diagram, the process, how the lines have been done and the slip given and buttonhole stitches are done on both the sides, whereas a bar tack is completed and a knot is done in the wrong side of your garment as a proper finish. Fabric or bound buttonholes. These are more decorative than work buttonholes and are suitable for women's and children's wear especially. The decorative possibility arises from the use of a strip of material to cover and bind the raw edges of the hole. The binding shows on the right side is a finished button and may be made of the same material as a garment or of contrasting materials. While doing this, the binding strips are cut so that the lengthwise grain runs along the length of the buttonhole. Checks and striped materials look better. In the strip, it cuts on a through bias. In making this type of buttonhole, the facing can be applied only after the buttonholes are finished. To provide a double layer of cloth of matching buttonholes, an interfacing is used. The facing finally covers the and conceals the working on the wrong side. Steps in constructing work buttonhole To construct a work buttonhole, first pin an interfacing fabric to the wrong side of the garment under the proposed buttonhole and mark the position of the buttonhole on it by doing a running stitch. Then cut a strip of material of about 1.5 inches wide and 1 inch longer than the finished buttonhole. They will be used as bias strip. Then place this strip on the garment right side facing and with the center of the strip cover buttonhole marking made on the interfacing on the right side. Continue mission stitch around the tacking in the shape of a rectangle using long stitches. The long side of the uh, rectangle should be 1 8 inch away from the tacking line on either side and the short side should be exactly across the ends of the tacking line. Then Cut along the tacking line to within 1 fourth inch of the ends. Then cut diagonally on all four corners. Pull binding strip through slit to wrong side of the garment and tuck gently to get a neat rectangular opening. Press on both long sides to flatten nicely. Next fold back the strip to form even binding of about 1 8 inch width along each side meeting the center of the opening. Basket binding in place along each side of the buttonhole and work diagonally tacking stitches. These stitches need to be removed only after the facing is applied till the garment is completed. With the garment place right side up, turn the garment and the interfacing fabrics back over at each and each end of the buttonhole and stitch the triangle ends. Trim away the excess strip, leaving about one fourth inch the buttonhole at at each end and about one and a half inches on each side. After completing the buttonholes, a facing has to be applied to the garment and buttonholes cut through the facing. Button loops. Instead of buttonholes, loops may be used to do fasten buttons. These may be made of thread or cloth. We have different variations in this. First one is thread loop. The thread loop is inconspicuous fastening, which is most often found at the neck edge of collars. To make a thread loop, sew four or five strands of matching thread on the upper underlap in the correct position, then work button with stitches over these strands. Whereas fabric loops are made of strip of bias fabric, stitches and turn inside out to form a narrow strip. The fabric used may be of self material or contrasting material. The fasteners add a decorative trim in children's and women's garments. Corded loops. These are made the same way as ordinary cloth loops, except that a cording is placed inside the bias strip. Corded frog. These are very decorative and can be made in various designs. Button loops of the frog should be long enough to slip over button smoothly. 
Construction of fabric loops. Cut a strip of bias space about 1 inch wide and 8 inch length or according to the length required. Then fold it half lengthwise right side facing together and stitch about 1 8 inch from the folded edge till the end of and trim the seam allowance to 1 8 inch. Attach a strong thread to one end of the seam. Then turn it inside out by drawing the thread with the help of a hand needle. Cut into equal length according to the finished length of the loop plus seam allowance. Place these on the right side of overlap shaped as loops turned away from the edge of the opening. Then tap the facing right side down over loop and do machine stitch along the seam line. Once you finish with this, turn the facing to wrong side and tack it in position as required. Next is buttons. A small button is also used as an important fastener to hold clothes together on a person. It is usually a this shape piece having holes or shank through which it is sewed to one side of the garment. It should be selected to suit the color, design, texture as well as the fabric and the style of the garment. Buttons may be made of fabric, bone, glass, metal, plastic, etc. On dresses, buttons are covered with silk fabric made of thread used. If you provide scraps of fabric to well-established tailors, they get the buttons covered by a special machine. These are known as fabric buttons, where a fabric of matching color has been placed with the button and it is tied completely using special machines. These are the two types of buttons used mostly, which are buttons with holes, shank type buttons. Let's see in detail about button with holes. Marking position of buttons. To mark position of buttons, place overlap over the underlap so that the center of the lines coincide. If the buttonholes are horizontal, insert a pin through the buttonhole about 1 8 inch from the end which is near to the center front. And for vertical hole, we need to put the pin through the middle of the buttonhole. Lift overlap and mark the position of the button on the pin mark. Sewing buttons with holes. To sew this button, using double thread. Bring the needle up and down through the holes in the buttons with a pin kept over the button. After working enough stitches, remove the pin, lift the button and form a shank by winding thread tightly around the strand about 6 times. Now fasten the thread on the wrong side and then put the knot and complete it. Buttons with 4 holes may be sewn in shape of a cross, 2 parallel lines, a square or an arrowhead as it is shown in the image. Four hook buttonhole is done as a cross as well as two parallel lines and we can use any other design if needed. Sewing shank button. Bring needle to fabric and shank and then back long through fabric. Stitch through fabric and shank until button is secure. Fasten the thread on the underside which is your wrong side. Link buttons. These are used in links for cuffs or for the front of a coat or a jacket. These should be of two button holes, one on each side of the placket's opening. To make the link, hold two buttons and desired distance apart and connect the buttons together with a strand of thread. Work buttonhole stitches across the strand and fasten the thread. There are other types of fasteners such as snaps or press buttons. These are used to hold edges that will not have much strain when the garment is worn. They will open out if used on snug fitting parts. These are available in various sizes and weights. They are either black or silver. This fastener has two sections. One section has a knob and the other has a socket. You must place the part with the knob on the wrong side of the overlap close to the edge and must take care to see that, that the stitches fasten the button to the overlap. Do not show on the right side of the garment. 
After the north path are sewn to the garment, match the two sides of the garment that will be held together by the button. Press the knob side against the fabric on the other side so that it makes a slight impression. Make a tiny stitch on the fabric where the impression is formed. Then place the socket side of the snap centered over the stitch. To fix both parts of the button, four to five buttonhole stitches should be worked to each hole. While passing from one hole to another, carry the thread by passing the needle under the button. After stitching through all the holes, thread should be fastened securely on the wrong side. Hoops and eyes. These are used on plackets where there is crosswise strain. They form an inconspicuous closing. They should be placed close to each other without much space in between to prevent the opening from gapping. The hoop should be placed about 1 eighth inch inside the finished edge of the overlap on the wrong side. Then work buttonhole stitches around the rings of the hoop. Slip the needle through the fabric and bring it out near the hook end. Take several back stitches across and under the loop of the hoop to hold it down firmly. Fasten off with small back stitches. The stitches should not be shown on the right side of your garment. The eyes may be of metal or worked with thread. Thread eyes are used on blouses and dresses made of fine fabric. They can be made to match colors of the garment so as to be inconspicuous. To find the exact position of stitching this eye, lap the edge with hoop over the underlap in proper position and mark the end of the hoop with pin or pin. At this position, work a few back stitches along enough for the hoop to pass and then work buttonhole stitches over these threads. Fasten the thread firmly on the wrong side. Metal eye comes in two types. The straight eye is used for overlapping edge and the round eye for edges that meet each other. The straight eye is positioned the same way as the thread eye, but the round eye is placed on the wrong side of the underlap and must extend about 1 eighth inch beyond the edge of the underlap. To fix metal eyes, work buttonhole stitches around their rings. Eyelets and cords. Eyelets are mainly used for lacing front openings, decoratively to make an eyelet, cut a circular hole and work buttonhole stitches around the edges. Complete your assignment and submit in a Google Classroom as soon as possible. Thank you.